It is my delight to greet all of the members of the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated, along with all of our family members and friends. I am so grateful to have this opportunity to greet you and to call our convention to order in this 140th session of our convention. These are undoubtedly some very difficult times, unprecedented days. These are times that seem to test the very essence of our faith. My brothers and my sisters, in spite of all of the extenuating circumstances, I am authentically grateful to God for the privilege of being able to experience this convention uh, via the internet. It is uh, undoubtedly a new experience for National Baptist. Um, it is certainly a new experience for uh, the president. And yet I am thankful uh, that this medium of communication is available and we have planned uh, uh, this year an abbreviated version of our convention. It is truncated and we should have two days and uh, I would uh, ask that you would certainly uh, uh, pray for us and, uh, and join us via the internet and I encourage all of our churches uh, to be sure that you register. It is extremely important that you do so. Uh, it is extremely important that we do not forget uh, persons uh, who have suffered immensely uh, from um, hurricanes and those who have suffered immensely from the pandemic and many other ills that have assailed us. It is important that we remember those of us who are strong or to help to bear the infirmities of the weak. And so I encourage you to be mindful as you do that. And once again, uh, in spite of the difficulty, in spite of the challenges, I am delighted to call this convention to order, uh, uniquely so, for these two days. And I pray that God will use these days for his own glory and for our good. God bless you. It is my prayer. And I pray that you will indeed join us for these two days. The convention is now in order for business. Shall we pray? God of grace, God of glory, we come in the name of our Christ, first of all, thanking you for our great convention and this 140th annual session. Even though it's virtual, we ask that you invoke your presence and your power and bless our time together through this social media platform. We ask blessings upon our esteemed president, Dr. Jerry Young. Thank you for his vision and his voice that speaks volume to lead our convention to our higher heights. We pray blessings upon the cabinet, the auxiliary leaders, the constituents of our convention. God's touch every participant that participates in this first annual virtual session. We pray for our nation as we experience and encounter this virus and violence across the nation. God, we pray that you bring racial reconciliation among the people in this world, a world that you created in your own image. Father, we ask now blessing upon this annual session. Let this session bring glory to your name. We pray that you will be glorified and the convention will be edified. Oh, in the name of Jesus, our Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our Master. Amen. Our scripture lesson for this hour comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, began reading at verse number 16. 
and it reads thus. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some departed. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things wheresoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. I know. We have planned uh, as, as best we could uh, uh, these two days, and, and hopefully they will be impactful uh, in all of our lives, and certainly we hope that they will provide information and inspiration that we may be more effective in ministry and missions uh, on, on this day. Uh, uh, we certainly will hear from our Congress uh, leadership. Um, we will indeed um, uh, hear from uh, persons who will be talking about uh, cultivated uh, convention, cultivated economic development. Uh, during this particular day, uh, we will hear from uh, our chaplain, and then secondly, we'll hear uh, not only from our chaplain, our memorial service, uh, uh, and then, of course, uh, we will uh, be honoring our pastors who have labored for 50 years at least uh, in ministry. Um, and then in the afternoon, of course, we will be dealing with our social justice, uh, criminal justice, and, and, uh, and then, of course, uh, on, uh, on tonight at 7 o'clock, uh, our late night team will be in charge, and so we have planned a day that we hope indeed will be uh, profitable for you in terms of your spiritual walk, and hopefully you will receive again both information and inspiration. So I encourage you uh, to, to uh, stay tuned, and uh, as it were, I believe God has a blessing for you. So thank you again, and we bless God for you, and uh, please again keep praying for us and keep praying for our country. Hello, my brothers and sisters. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I am welcoming you to the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated. On behalf of the National Board of Evangelism, I am Dr. Leroy Hill Jr., the pastor of the Ebenezer Baptist Church of Portsmouth, Virginia. I also serve as the chairman of the Board of Evangelism and we are grateful to God for Dr. Jerry Young for the appointment. We greet all of you, Dr. Young's staff, the executive committee, the executive board, all officers and official leaders of the parent body, auxiliaries and commissions, and all the appointed officers of this fine convention. It is my privilege and my honor to share with you uh, the Board of Evangelism's initiative. First of all, uh, I was privileged to serve in the state of Virginia for 13 years as the state uh, director of evangelism and still serve as a co-chair there. I've served in the southeast region of the National Baptist Convention uh, with uh, uh, the former chair uh, Dr. O.K. Patterson, and as of December, I was appointed by Dr. Jerry Young to succeed Dr. Patterson and began by attending and being installed uh, at the Midwinter Board uh, January 2020, was trained uh, in, by our pastor, President Dr. Jerry Young at the March uh, 2020 session. While we were there, COVID broke out. And so we hadn't been able to uh, get to 
uh, do much around the nation, but we've been doing telephone calls, uh, interviews, uh, and conferences uh, digitally as we're building our team and preparing for the future. With that being said, let me get to my assignment. I want to let you know what we're going to be doing uh, uh, up through 2025 with the help of the Lord, your prayer, and your participation and support. <clears throat> we're going to, as the National Baptist Convention Board of Evangelism, we're going to uh, envision the future exceptionally through a commitment to Christ-centered evangelism. And so we're going to share with you uh, our action plan and our wigs, our wildly important goals. We're going to build the National Baptist Convention USA uh, Evangelism Executive Team. We're going to have a, uh, an assistant that's going to work with me as a chair, also approved by the president. Going to build the National Baptist Convention Evangelism Executive Team consisting of support from the parent bodies, ministry, and auxiliaries, uh, and, and, and supporting uh, our commissions and Congress with people from our board and your board helping to grow together as liaisons for the entity. That's one of our goals. And then to implement an evangelism structure reflective of and alignment with the National Baptist Convention's vision, purpose, and mission 2020 through 2025. We want to develop and implement curriculum and strategies using social media and web-based technology as effective ways to train for evangelism and discipleship in meeting regionally and meetings regionally and nationally. Also, as we envision the future exceptionally through a commitment to Christ-centered evangelism, we want to develop the National Baptist Convention's regional evangelism teams to host evangelism training for churches in their region, state, conventions, as well as their associations. We also want to utilize our convention's evangelist, Dr. Manuel Scott, Jr., in that process. Also, we want to partner with church health and church planting re research agencies for relevant best practice methodologies for 21st century church planting for churches and the convention to equip potential church planters to plant healthy churches regionally and nationally through our new church planting arm of the Board of Evangelism. We want to partner with the Home and Farm Missions Board to broaden the fellowship to, and outreach for missions and evangelism through missions opportunities globally. And then finally, we want to plan and host uh, National Baptist Convention national and regional evangelism workshops annually to coincide with the annual evangelism weekend that has been established by our predecessor, uh, Dr. O.K. Patterson. Now, speaking of that, uh, our theme for the department, our theme for our ministry is doing evangelism exceptionally as we take a page and a piece of our president's focus for uh, 2020 through 2025. And so let's share that with you. First of all, we want the NBC of National Baptist Convention to also mean new baptisms continuously. We want to be baptizing new converts as we reach lost souls for Jesus Christ. We also want the NBC to stand for new Baptist churches annually. We want to grow and increase by planting churches around our country, winning souls, baptizing souls, training the body, and planting churches for the kingdom of God. We have some very important wigs, wildly important goals that we want to achieve and we're aiming for by 2025. First wig is that we will share the gospel with 14 million unchurched people by 2025. How do we plan to do this? Every church member shares the gospel with at least two persons, therefore doubling the number of its current membership by reaching the unchurched people in their communities, resulting in a 15% increase of membership, equaling uh, approximately 1 million new baptisms. That's good news. And then we need to understand why we have that number, because approximately there are 7 million members of the National Baptist Convention as of 2020. And so our goal is to have 8 million members in 2025. We have a second wig. Through our commitment to Christ-centered evangelism, 
we will increase its member churches by 10% by 2025. As of right now, the National Baptist Convention and the Board of, Ed uh, Christian, Board of Evangelism excuse me, will conduct church planning workshops, multi-site church development for rapidly growing congregations, as well as recruiting potential churches through evangelism trainings, therefore resulting in a 10% increase in the National Baptist Convention member churches. Now, there's approximately 33,000 churches uh, currently, uh, but our goal is to have 36,300 churches 2025. With goal number three, our tools and training. And having said that, I want to just move into what that looks like. And so one of our trainings, as you have noticed, uh, uh, the Great Commission Lifestyle, and we're just going to read through it, don't have time to teach it, but you can kind of see what our training sessions will look like every time somebody comes to one of our sessions during our annual sessions and our midwinter sessions. And so uh, this one is on the Great Commission as a lifestyle, how we ought to live. Everybody, uh, every member is a witness for Jesus Christ. And so we learn of the affirmation and authorization process uh, that Jesus has given to us. We learn the mandate. Uh, that's been given to us and and you see those verses there we also learn of the promise and we will continue to explain that out what that means and then we will break it into different points affirmation and authority what that looks like when we uh, as a church working together to build the body of Christ as we practice in affirmation as we work in worship we listen to the word we go out and witness and we work uh, at, while it is day because night coming, no one can work. That's affirmation. And then we have affirmation power or authority. And that's because we are considered the light of the world. Amen. He has called us light, so we must be the light. And then we live by the J power or the Jesus power of the Holy Spirit who gives us our authority to do what we've been called to do. And so that's affirmation and power. But as we still follow the mandate, the Great Commission, of course, we've been told to go, and then we've been told to go, and then we've been told to go, and be told to go, go, and go some more. You see, we are a going people as New Testament Great Commission churches, and so our mandate is to go, not be attractive, but go and attract and then bring to the fold. Amen. And so, as we continue the mandate, we are to make disciples after going to reach we are to identify them with Jesus as Savior. That means present the gospel. They become saved. They identify with Jesus as Savior and Lord. And is baptized. Uh, then they follow the Lord in obedience. And then they follow the Lord in obedience to his word. And then they bear fruit in the world. You know, a tree is known by the fruit it bears. And so Jesus says that we ought to what? Retain uh, and remain with our fruit. And then there's a triad of triumphant transformation in the commission. It's good to help people understand that because Jesus never leaves us alone. He says, as I send you, you go to them. To do what? Make disciples of them. And so as I, you, them, them, you, I, I, them, you. However it goes, there's a triad of triumphant transformation which makes discipleship radical and bring changes in our world, changes in our church, our community. But as we continue with the mandate, as we continue to follow the Great Commission, we find out that we got to go into all the world and reach people globally. Amen. The world is our field and the field is our world. Amen. And continuing with the mandate, we go out there and we reach all people, pantata ethne, all the ethnos, all the people or ethnicities in the world. That's our assignment, my brothers and sisters. That's what we're going to be encouraging churches. We're going to have plug and play pieces for that. And so we, we start in our community, our Jerusalem, Judea, our Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world, according to Acts 1, 8. And then, but those people, they are our fruit. And our fruit is to remain with us as we read in John's Gospel, chapter 15, 1 through 17. They are our fruit. Okay? And so the mandate we continue. What is it, man? It's evangelism, which is communicating God's good news to those who do not know it. It is also establishing 
uh, excuse me, this evangelism is nothing more than sharing God's uh, and showing God's love for hu all of humanity. And then lastly, evangelism is one loved soul telling another loved soul where to find the lover. For God so loved the world. Some people in the world don't know they've been loved by God. And so one who has been loved uh, have to tell somebody who don't know their love how to and where to find the lover. Amen. And then the mandate continues with once they find the lover, then they need to be baptized and follow him. And they come to the cross. After the cross, baptism. And they're baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The triquetra is a symbol of the Trinity. All right? And then after they have been baptized, we must teach them. Amen. Going, baptizing, and teaching. That's the mandate of the Great Commission. Teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Amen. And then lastly, as we have this mandate, each one must teach. The church must teach. Amen. We must teach to reach. Teach them all things God's word commands us to teach. What else we teach them? We give them the commands of God's word as the commands of God. Amen. We teach them to obey and follow, observe, and keep, and live out God's mandate uh, for the church. God's mandate for their lives individually in the world. And then finally, the mandate calls us to teach from the heart. What do we teach from the heart? We must teach from heart to heart so that they can desire to follow Jesus Christ. We teach them that they must know and do. They, they must know and do. We teach them what they must know and do. This is how character is developed by content. Jesus' pattern was to be and then to do and then to teach. So you have to be it in order to do it so that you can teach it. That was Jesus' pattern. But Paul's pattern, similarly, but Paul figured that you must have content before conduct, which is character development. And so we help people to learn what that means because a lot of your evangelism is by how you live before you ever open your mouth. Amen. And so that is the focus. We believe in teaching those principles and those components. And then lastly, we teach to the profile. What is the profile? There's a six-point profile of a true disciple in John's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 7 through 17. And Barna's research called the true disciples, resilient disciples, <clears throat> recently uh, published uh, in 2020. So go out there and look for the recent Barna uh, research on uh, disciple making. And it's fascinating stuff, but it's right there in the Bible in John chapter 15. Uh, a disciple remains in Jesus Christ. Amen. A disciple is be obedient to Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. A disciple bears fruit for Jesus Christ. Certainly. A disciple glorifies God the Father with their lives. Absolutely. A disciple has total joy. Amen. A joy that only Jesus could give. And a disciple loves as Jesus Christ loves. That's a, a love of highest good for all people at all times. And only you can get that love through Jesus Christ. And then lastly, we have a promise. So we are affirmed and we're authorized with power. We have a mandate that we go, that we reach, that we teach, uh -huh, that they observe, that they're baptized and identify with Jesus Christ and they obey his commands in the world, being fruitful by bearing fruit. And then he's given us this. He says, Lord, look, behold, and see what I am with you, the I am, the Emmanuel, the God with us, I am with you to affirm you, to anoint you, to appoint you as you are going, as you execute the mandate to go as you go, to baptize as you reach, and to teach what I have taught you, Jesus says. And when you do that, he says, I'll be with you until the end of the ages, to the end of time, to the end of the eras, amen and amen. So this 
is what the Board of Evangelism has been working on. This is what the Board of Evangelism will present to each and every one of you who comes to our training. This is what the National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated Board of Evangelism, a vision, action plan, and a sample of our training for the glorifying of the Father in the name of the Son to win souls to Jesus Christ. May God bless you and keep you. And thank you for being, allowing me, Dr. Young, to be a part of this great ministry. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Dr. Elliot Cuff, president of the National Baptist Congress of Christian Education. And on behalf of Dr. Jerry Young, our national president, I greet you in the matchless name of our Savior. The Congress of Christian Education is the National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated, traveling portable university for Christian education. Annually, the Congress is moved around America and we offer over 300 courses covering an array of Bible, church, theology, administration, Sunday school, young people, children, young adults, millennials. We offer everything for the church and its pastor to strengthen the work of Christian education in the local church. We are proud to have some of the best Christian education instructors in the world as a part of our award-winning faculty. We are thankful that in the Congress of Christian Education, we are multi-generational in scope without losing our relevancy nor our impact as agents of the scriptures to everyone in the world. We are an auxiliary that is on the move in this generation. We care about all of our young people in the convention. We offer annually a oratorical contest where young people from local churches participate in state and in district competition and they are winners are brought to the annual session and we award them prizes that they might continue their excellence in education. We also have annually a children's rally, a youth rally, and an I rock gathering of young adults and millennials. These rallies are the places where we have a combined effort toward Christian education as we equip our young people and they are given the opportunity to display the incredible skills that God has gifted them with in music, in arts, and in drama. We are so proud of all of our young people. And we also have an annual gathering of millennials and young adults. Not only do we offer topics from the Bible and issues from everyday life, looking through the biblical lens of the scriptures, but we give to our millennials the opportunity to express their love for Jesus Christ through music and pageantry. 
We also have annually a scholarship program. It is one of the best scholarship programs anywhere in the religious world. We aid and support excellence in our young people and we give them that exhortation to continue their excellence in life as they pursue careers and vocations, often to serve the church, but yes, they all will serve the kingdom. We also have a college fair as we collaborate with all of our historically black colleges and universities. We invite them to be at the annual Congress so that our young people may have the opportunity to talk with the representatives of these wonderful schools of learning and get the chance to have a face-to-face -face with a counselor or a dean from a campus and who can share with them about what is ahead in life should they choose to attend one of the historically black colleges and universities. We are a Congress of Christian education that's on the move. During the pandemic, we did not completely shut down our efforts on equipping the disciples. We here at the Congress, under the direction and support of our national president, Dr. Jerry Young, we collaborated with the Technology Commission under the leadership of Dr. Alvin Love, and we launched Digiversity, an online opportunity to equip the saints in the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated. Our first launch was quite a success, and we're looking now for Dean Call Washington to continue forward with the Digiversity because we're not going to panic during the pandemic. We shall persevere and pursue excellence in Christian education. We are here as the National Baptist Congress of Christian Education to support the vision of our esteemed and beloved leader, Dr. Jerry Young. And Dr. Young has said to us, and we have bought in 100% that we are envisioning the future exceptionally as we glorify God through Christ-centered evangelism. We want to invite you to give us a try if you have never come to an annual Congress. It will be the experience of a lifetime. Again, this is Dr. Elliot Cuff, president of the National Baptist Congress of Christian Education, and we hope to see you real soon in one of our many, many courses. God bless you. Dr. Jerry Young, our illustrious president to the president of our Congress of Christian Education, Dr. Elliot Cuff, to all of the officers and auxiliary presidents of the National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated, I bring you greetings as dean of your Congress. I'm the Reverend Dr. Carla Washington, Jr. I'm now serving as dean of the Congress of Christian Education. Dr. Young asked us to bring some words to you as to the vision he has in store for us as we look forward to move Christian education to a different plateau. Our life is exposed to God's inspection, and so is our Department of Christian Education. We ought to spring forth with sincere and serious matters as it relates to Christian education. And so, as we have launched 
Digiversity um, during this COVID season. We are looking to um, change curriculum as we move forward in our convention to make our convention more viable to the situation that present themselves in our society. We want education to move us in a way that God will be pleased. And we want education to move us so that one generation can see what the last generation saw. And so, uh, Christian Education Ministry of the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated is moving and looking forward to doing great things in the future. We plan on meeting you in Atlanta, Florida in June of 2021 and giving you a Congress that will be worth coming for. May God bless you, may God keep you, is our prayer. Hello, National Baptist Convention. Thank you once again for inviting Liberty Bank and Trust Company to be a part of your annual meeting. It does look a little different this year as we are a part of the virtual world now, but I am sure it is going to be just as impactful as it has been in years past. Liberty Bank and Trust Company is in partnership with the National Baptist Convention to provide an affinity credit card program for the members of National Baptist. Dr. Jerry Young has had a passion and desire to provide avenues of financial freedom for the members of National Baptist. The affinity credit card is just another avenue in which we would hope that you're able to be financially empowered. Liberty Bank and Trust President, Mr. Alden J. McDonald shares that vision. He shares a vision to provide financial freedom and financial empowerment to the communities in which we serve. In 1972, Liberty Bank and Trust opened for business with $2 million in assets with a goal of providing quality products and services to the city of New Orleans, underserved and disadvantaged minority population. Nearly four decades later, Liberty Bank has a profound record of growth, boasting tremendous profitability and asset accumulation. Although still true to our mission, Liberty Bank currently has a diverse makeup of customers throughout the country. We have 600 plus million in assets, 160 full and part-time employees. We are in 10 different states with numerous ATM locations throughout the country. Liberty Bank is both an excellent corporate citizen and community stakeholder. We offer a full menu of products and services, corporate and institutional services and products, traditional consumer services, loans and credit cards, small business services, loans and credit cards, mortgage lending, insurance, and risk management. The National Baptist Convention's Affinity Credit Card is another avenue to provide financial empowerment to the members of NBC. The credit card has many different features. The interest rate is as low as 9.96, and this is a fixed rate for qualified borrowers. There is a low annual fee, free travel insurance, worldwide ATM access, and most of all, the card is a logo branded National Baptist card. There are credit criteria, the debt to income ratio, must not exceed 43%. You would have to be employed for two years. Your minimum credit score is 600. There cannot be any delinquent accounts listed on your credit report or unpaid charge off accounts. And also, you would not be allowed to have a bankruptcy within the last 12 months. Now, how to apply? There are multiple ways 
you can start by visiting the National Baptist website or you can choose to visit Liberty Bank's website. There are, there are several important factors when applying. The most important of all is ensuring that you are using the NBC product code. The product code is NBC. There's also going to be a section on the application that will ask you, how did you learn about us? In that drop down box in the application, there is a section that reflects National Baptist. And we would ask that you select National Baptist Convention. It is our desire to give you a decision within 24 hours of a completed application. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me directly at 504-240-5138 or at amogillis at libertybank.net. Once again, National Baptist, thank you for allowing us to be here. We're very excited to continue our partnership. We're in very strange times, as we all recognize. God's plan is better than ours. We look forward to seeing you all in the future, continue to be steadfast, and continue to work towards a better world for all of us. Bye, National Baptist. See you soon. MMBB is the best friend a young pastor can have. When you're young, you have this idea that you're invincible. I mean, that the way things are, they're going to always be that way. And, uh, and you really got it going on. But I want to tell you that just as sure as we are all living, there are circumstances and situations that are inevitable in life. I've seen the horror, really, of people coming to a certain place in life where they ought to be comfortable and they ought to be secure and they ought to be free to worship and to serve God in so many ways and they can't because there was no financial planning. I'm going to tell you, I've seen it and that's why I'm so committed to making this happen and I'm so committed to making sure that young pastors understand this so that in the event that there are incidents in your life along the way, guess what? MMBB steps right in. In one word, phenomenal. Phenomenal in the sense that it has given me hope for the future, it has given me a path for the future, and literally, it has given me peace about the future. As Christians, we know change is central to our faith. A life rooted in Christ is a transformed life that seeks to love and serve God with all of our hearts, minds, and souls, and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. The God we serve is both constant and enduring, and yet God is also the master and the mastermind of creative change. The Apostle Paul reminds us in the letter to the Romans that God calls us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Transformation is central to how we view our ministry and forms the core values of MMBB's mission. Over the course of serving our members, we have learned that when you acquire the tools that unlock the path to financial wellness, it leads to a transformed mindset, a transformed sense of renewed possibility, and most importantly, it leads to an altered perspective on your ability to implement and sustain well-being over the long term of your financial affairs. But lasting transformation happens because of specific steps that are taken. So what are these steps for transforming lives in 2019? At MMBB, it means that we beat our members where they are and to help them forgive themselves and make peace with past financial decisions they may regret. Because each person's financial circumstances are different, we seek to discern the right questions to ask so we can guide them in outline, uh, outlining their goals, 
determining the steps to reach those goals, and building a holistic vision for their financial futures. We know that some changes will mean short-term sacrifice to achieve long-term security. That requires us to help members develop increased confidence in their ability to make tough decisions and commit to the steps needed for lasting change. Together, we develop a roadmap for transformation that is realistic, doable, and yields some immediate wins that will foster continued excitement about what is possible. And finally, we never forget that God is on the journey with us, members and staff together. Greetings. I am William J. Wine, pastor of the Second Baptist Church in Battle Creek, Michigan. I'm also the ecclesiastical endorser for the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated. For decades and decades, the Pastoral Care Chaplain's Auxiliary has served as a valuable and vital auxiliary to the denomination. We are responsible in this auxiliary and as the ecclesiastical endorser, I am responsible for endorsing all of the National Baptist chaplains. We have chaplains in the military. As a matter of fact, we have National Baptist chaplains who are serving in all four branches of the military. By the way, let me thank those chaplains who are providing spiritual support and providing undergirding support to families and soldiers who are serving our country. Thank you for your commitment to ministry and thank you for your service to this country. Our military chaplains are required by the military to have letters of endorsement by their denomination. The letter of endorsement provides two specific things for the military chaplains. Number one, it affirms their connection to the denomination in which they represent. Number two, it brings association to those chaplains, to other chaplains from various other ministries of this work. We also provide letters of endorsements to persons who are interested in becoming military chaplains. The military requires those persons who are entering that chaplaincy program to have letters of endorsement indicating that they too are connected and committed to the denomination in which they represent. So we do provide letters of endorsement to military chaplains, but we also provide letters of endorsement to our civilian chaplains. Again, we are blessed in this convention to have civilian chaplains who are serving God in ministry in various venues of ministry. We have chaplains serving in the correctional facilities, both federal as well as state. We have chaplains in the clinical context, serving as chaplains in hospitals and nursing homes. We also have chaplains serving in the new field of chaplaincy, which we call the marketplace, in the workplace. So we are providing endorsement for our civilian chaplains as well. Also, we provide endorsement for our civilian chaplains to the APC. The APC is the Association of Professional Chaplains. When Protestant chaplains are seeking certification, the APC is the highest accrediting body in the United States that certifies a chaplain for board certification or certifies that chaplain in a specialized training area we provide those letters of endorsement to those chaplains to the APC to assure the APC that those persons we endorse are connected to the National Baptist Convention in terms of being members in good standing. But perhaps one of our greatest highlights and our greatest celebration takes place during the annual Congress of Christian Education, which takes place in June. It is during that week that our chaplains, both military and civilians, come together under the roof of education. And during that week, we provide for them sessions 
that informs them, inspires them, and encourages them. These are sessions that bring to those chaplains tools and techniques that they may find applicable in their various places of ministry. We provide speakers who are experts in the field so that all of our chaplains are learning from each other as well as learning from those who are the experts in the field. So I am very grateful that I have the privilege to serve as the ecclesiastical endorser for the National Baptist Convention. But let me assure you that I could not provide that week that we call Professional Development Institute. During that week where we have these sessions, I could not provide the Professional Development Institute without the aid of some very competent, caring leaders who serve as my leadership team. Let me take a moment and allow them to introduce you to the team that helps me provide a week of information, inspiration, and encouragement. Please take a moment as they introduce themselves to you. I am Dr. Kendall D. Jones, Senior, Senior Pastor of New Bethel Baptist Church of Winston-Salem. I've been a board certified chaplain for more than 24 years. I am a member of the leadership team of the Pastoral Care Chaplain Auxiliary of the National Baptist Convention USA, Inc. Hello, I am Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Stephen T. Dabbs. I am a head chaplain here at Altus Air Force Base, Oklahoma, and I have the pleasure of speaking to you from my office. Uh, it is my delight to join Dr. Wine in his service to our leaders and chaplains in the National Baptist Convention, and it is my pleasure also to represent our convention, our president, and our endorser. Thank you. I am Tammy Briggs, and I serve as a chaplain in the United States Army, presently at Fort Rucker, Alabama. I am a member of the leadership team and the pastoral care and chaplain auxiliary of the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated. I am Marlon G. Three, and I serve as a chaplain for the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. Currently, I am the chaplain for the Hilltop Unit and the Woodman State Jail. I am a member of the leadership team of the pastoral care and chaplain auxiliary for the National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated. I am Chaplain Mary V. Camp, a member of the Second Baptist Church, Las Vegas, Nevada, where the Reverend Clayton D. Moore serves as pastor. I also serve as chaplain at Messages of Faith Ministries, West Care, Veterans Advocacy of Nevada, and Nevada Chaplaincy. I am a member of the leadership team of the Pastoral Care Chaplain Auxiliary of the National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated. The scripture says in Revelation, blessed are those who die in the Lord. They shall rest from their labor and their deeds shall follow them. There are those who walk with us in this National Baptist Convention who no longer walk with us now, but yet their deeds will always live with us. I invite you now to join the Pastoral Care Auxiliary as we take time to reflect and to remember those who are no longer with us. We pause now to reflect and to remember those who are part of our National Baptist Convention, USA Inc. Those who have labored faithfully among us and now they have been called from labor to reward as we remember these great servants of God, I'm reminded of the passage in a book by Dr. Newland called How We Die, Reflections on Life, Final Chapter, and he writes, the greatest dignity to be found in death is the dignity of the life that has preceded it. It is a form of hope to which we all can achieve, and it is the most abiding Hope resides in the meaning of what our lives have been. As we celebrate their lives, let us also remember the words of the Apostle Paul. They have fought a good fight. They have finished the course. They have kept the faith. And now they have a crown of righteousness. Let us pray. 
God, we pray now for those pastors and ministers who no longer walk among us in the flesh, but continue to live among us in spirit. We thank you for their labor of ministry and sacrifice in this convention. God, in your wisdom, you have set life within the narrow boundaries of time and circumstance where we have little power to shape things to our desires. Therefore, you use your great power to make what you desire to happen within and through them. It is your will that through hard work and suffering, they should walk the upward road that goes down through the dark valley of the shadow of death. Yet they walk through it by the strength you supplied. O oh God of our spiritual ancestors, in every age you have enlightened the souls of the faithful. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of shared memories through which the great stories of the past live with us today. Thank you for the lives of the saints and for the help we can gain from their example. Thank you for the memory of pastors and ministers who no longer walk among us, but whose feet have left footprints of faith. Shoulders have secured platforms for us to stand on. Hands who held on to the hope of eternity. Hearts hung on the halls of heaven, who now live beyond the tension of the already but not yet able to see and hear the voice of victory that reminds them how they made it over. It was only possible because of NBC. Nothing but Christ. Nothing but Christ can afford the pastors and ministers of the past and present access through the gateway that leads to everlasting freedom, liberty, and justice for all, both now and forevermore. Loving and wonderful God, the God of Sarah, the God of Rebecca, and the God of Rachel. We pray now for those faithful women of the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated, whose voices are now, are now silent, but whose virtues remain with us. We thank you, Lord, for the women in leadership, past, present, and future. Thank you for Sarah Layton. Thank you, Lord, for Nanny Helen Burroughs for Mary O. Ross. Thank you, Lord, for Cynthia Ray and Rosa B. Cooper. And we're so grateful, Lord, for Hugh Dell Gatewood and our current leader, Cynthia Perkins Smith. How we thank you, Lord, and pray for the faithful women who labor tirelessly behind the scene, for the unnamed women. We thank you, Lord, for the woman who worked tirelessly, past and present, behind the scene. We thank you for the women who take the stance of Fannie Lou Hamer, those women who keep pressing on because they're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the women who will stand for those who've been invited to the celebration, that those who are invited guests and who have accepted the invitation will not be disappointed at the celebration. We pray for those women who still say, as it says in John chapter 2, verse 5, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. In the name of him who is crucified, who is sustaining, in the precious name of him who is all giving, in Jesus' name. Eternal and wonderful God, we remember now the lady who served faithfully this work. Undergirding the National Baptist Convention mission and message. Father, we just come, ask you to continue to let the torch burn with the labors of this convention. As they go to and forth, Father, evangelizing to those that are lost, Father. Father, ask you to strengthen them, order their steps, Father, and be the light to their path. Father, we ask now that you continue to smile upon this convention, the National Baptist USA Incorporated. We love you and we need you right now. In Jesus' name. Lord, we ask that you give comfort to those families and friends who may continue to mourn and grieve the absence of those they love. Again, we thank you for all of those who served as servants of this convention and their local church. And Lord, as you spoke to Mary and Martha at the death of Lazarus, you said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth 
and believeth in me shall never die. And so, Father, as these families go home to mourn their loved ones, I pray in Jesus' name that you will wipe every tear from their eyes, that you will comfort those that mourn, and that you will bind up the brokenhearted, oh God. I pray, God, that you will give them beauty for ashes, and God, give them the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Father, we pray that you will give them the oil of joy for the spirit of mourning, and that you will comfort them with the comfort, God, that you yourself can only comfort us with. Father, I pray that you will be with them in the midnight hour, God, when they are sitting up in the bed and they're shedding tears over their loved one. I pray, God, that when they wake up in the morning, that they wake up and see Jesus, oh God, and know that you are with them and that you will never leave them, neither will you forsake them. Even now, Lord God, in this time of mourning and bereavement, God, we pray that you will comfort their heart comfort their spirits and let them know that they will see their loved ones again. Hallelujah. On that great getting up morning, God. And we just thank you, God, for their service to our convention. We pray for their families and we pray, God, that you will, that they will hear also, well done, thy good and faithful servant. We do pray. Amen. 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 On behalf of the pastoral care auxiliary, the chaplains of the National Baptist Convention, I want to thank you for taking time to hear who we are and perhaps get an understanding of what we do. You will find more information of our auxiliary on the web page of the National Baptist Convention USA. If you have any questions, please feel free to call my office at 269-963-4640. Or you can email us at smbcnational at gmail.com. Let me thank also the president, Dr. Jerry Young, first of all, for his leadership, and secondly, for allowing us to have a part in this virtual convention as we have shared with you today who we are and what we do. Thank you, Dr. Yaw. Now I ask that you will receive the benediction from Chaplain Keith Carter. Now may the peace, presence, and power of our God, who is able, be with each of you. And may our sovereign God keep you safe and secure until we gather again. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I can say that you're wonderful, but it doesn't seem good enough. I can say that you're kind, but that would miss the mark. I can say that you're beautiful, but to me you are so much more. How do I communicate exactly who you are? I'm trying to convey the sentiments of my heart and say I really do appreciate the way you brighten up my day oh, oh yeah I can't find the words to describe you it would take a million years to explain the way I feel you are the epitome of everything I'll ever need I'm so in awe of you Lord you leave me speechless oh yes you do I love you Jesus yeah, I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Yeah, I live. In total adoration.
done unto you. Come on, let's worship. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of yeah. you, my cloudy, my cloudy days are gone. Hallelujah. I can sing to you, sing to you this song. This song. our pastors that have served more than 50 plus years. We honor you today. We celebrate you for your faithful service in the Lord's vineyard. We know Romans the 13 chapter the 7th verse it reads, give honor and respect to all of those to whom it is due because your labor is not in vain. On behalf of our president, Dr. Jerry Young, and our general secretary, Dr. Evan Everett, and the National Baptist Convention, we encourage you with these words. From 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter and the 58th verse, it reads, Therefore, my beloved brother, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, 
for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This year, 2020, our convention has been impacted with the transition of many of our pastors and leaders who have transitioned to be with the Lord. Today, we pause to honor their memories and contributions during this unusual season. One thing is for sure, the time may be uncertain. However, there are blessed assurance that they that die in the Lord, their work do follow them because precious is in the sight of the Lord or the death of his saints. And on behalf of our president, Dr. Jerry Young, our general secretary, Adam Edwards, we do celebrate the contribution of those who have gone on before us to receive their reward to be with the Lord.
the name of Jesus Christ our Lord I have more than a crush on the Christ I have a robust romance with the Redeemer and I'm not ashamed to own him this afternoon honor to and respect to Dr. Gary Young a convention president the board of directors delegates of the 140th annual session of the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated in memorial to the blessed dead in the Lord, we remember those who labored among us. Precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood our souls. In the stillness of the midnight, precious sacred scenes unfold. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying, to me right blessed are the dead who die in the Lord for now on yes says the spirit that they may rest from their labor and their works follow them blessed in the sight of the Lord is the dead of his saints it is a blessing today that we recognize those who have labored among us. They are the blessed ones because they are now in the presence of the Lord. We honor them in this 140th uh, annual virtual session of the National Baptist Convention USA in corporate. We bless God for their memories. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod your staff they comfort me we often look at the 23rd Psalm verse 4 as walking through the valley as an epoch in time as a period in time that we walk in that valley but I want to suggest to you this afternoon uh, that life is lived from, from the cradle to the grave in that valley. We live in the valley of the shadow of death. It's not an epoch in time. It's not a period in time. It's not a time that comes every now and then, perhaps David was saying this in the midst of his trials his son was after him Saul was after him and he was often uh, confronted with death but I believe that life since the fall of Adam is lived in that shadow of death I believe for the believer it is a shadow because Jesus on Calvary took the sting out of death death has no terror it's no terror on the believer because the believer uh, is the recipient of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago uh, when he went to Calvary he assassinated death there he took the sting out of it he took the terror out of it and he made it a shadow uh, that which cannot hurt us that which cannot impede us and we honor those who have labored among us, 
who now have gone through that valley and it was no more than a shadow for them it was no more than a sting for them uh, because he took the sting out of that which would be a, a terror to them uh, and we are honored and blessed because of those who uh, we honor today who are no longer with us they are comforted David said uh, yea though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me uh, in David's situation he was comforted by that which followed but we are comforted by the very fact that jesus preceded us uh, in our encounter with death and on that cross he took the power of the sting out of death he assassinated death on that cross oh death where is thy sting O Hades, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We celebrate those that we honor today that have labored with us. We think of them. They are not far from our hearts. Those who have fought a good fight, finished their race, they kept the faith. And finally, there is laid up for them the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to them and all of us who uh, have loved his appearing. They have finished well. We salute them today. We honor them today. We celebrate them today. And we Pray for those families of those who have advanced. Yes, they have advanced. It's really graduation for them. They have graduated. And that's why we can celebrate uh, their passing because they are not done. This is not over. The best for them uh, is yet to come for us, but they have experienced that which is far better. They're in the far better land, the far better land. We honor them and somewhat we are envious of them because they have experienced that which is far better. We do salute them. We do honor them. We wish we could do it in person, but we are doing it virtually. We respect them and we pray for their families. Lord Jesus, today we do pray for the families that have grieved and lost loved ones. We pray for their strength. We pray, God, that they might feel the comfort of your presence. Lord, in a special way, oh God, may they feel your presence in the absence of their loved one and help them, oh God, to understand it better by and by oh god we know that weeping may last for a night but joy does come in the morning god i pray that those who have been left behind would experience a morning even in the midst of their night we pray for your blessings upon those families those loved ones and bless the convention wherewith they served that it might be better off because of their presence among us. We salute them for their contribution to the ongoing work of the gospel through the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated. We bless the name. We bless the name of God. Amen. Thank God. Greetings. I'm Matthew Canada, Special Assistant to the President on behalf of Dr. Jerry Young, President of the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated, along with the members, board members, and constituent churches, allow me to extend to you this personal invitation to become a member of our outstanding organization. The National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated has been in business for over 140 years. 
During such time, we have provided constituent members with relevant information and inspiration designed to enhance and equip churches to become more effective and efficient in doing ministry and missions. Our theme for the next five years is envisioning the future exceptionally through Christ-centered evangelism. We invite you to join with us as you envision your future exceptionally as well. We are reforming and retrofitting our organization to meet the needs of the 21st century church. The convention, its auxiliaries, ministries, missions, and commissions would love to help you enhance your ministry. Our Congress of Christian Education is second to none in teaching and training church leaders and teachers. If you would like to become a part of this purpose-driven religious organization, all you need do is go to our website, www.nationalbaptist.com, and click on the membership link, and then join now. The process is simple. Our staff is on hand, ready and willing to assist you in any way possible. Thank you for your interest, and we look forward to welcoming you into our National Baptist family. God bless. Thank you again so much for joining us uh, on this Monday uh, for the first of two days of our truncated convention session this year. Uh, allow me to thank persons who have been integrally involved in this process uh, to have helped us tremendously. I owe them so many, so many thanks. And certainly I want to thank Anita Wilson for coming. Uh, as always, uh, she blessed us immensely and we thank God for her and for her relationship with our convention. Once again, thank all of you for your participation and thank all of you for having tuned in. And uh, it is our prayer that you will join us again, uh, uh, as it were, on this evening, uh, tonight, and then again on Tuesday. God bless.